In the name of Allah, the merciful, the great, the supporter, the protector, the defender for all human rights, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me and you, has blessed all of us, our families, our children, our loved ones, has blessed our nations, and blessed everything that exists on earth. I ask Allah by his names and attributes that he brings peace on to all of us. I, your host, Abdul Hakim Ali, in a new episode of Prophetic Traits, I'm glad to have you with me. Let you and I pray that the Lord open the gates of mercy and have all of our loved ones and those who are traveling or residing feel it safe and that the nations at large, Muslim and non-Muslim nations, are safe. May the world learn from the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, how to be merciful, how to care, how to unite, how to share, how to speak the truth, how to be courageous, to say the truth, how to be sincere, how to be truthful, how to be humans. Today, my dear viewer, I'd like to talk about the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his relationship with Allah and his feelings, his love for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the love that the Lord had for him. This relationship that did not exist between any other two or with anyone with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one time said in the hadith, Inna Allaha qad ittakhadhani khalilan kama ittakhadha Ibrahima khalila. Hey, indeed, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has taken me as a beloved one. Well, khulla in the Arabic language, my brothers and sisters, khalil, taken from the word khulla, in the Arabic language, my brothers and sisters, is the highest level of love. The highest level, level of love. He said, indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken me, the most beloved, as he has taken Ibrahim as the most beloved. There is these two prophets in the history of mankind have reached this level of love by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in fact, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa even surpassed that. And I know in his heart, as he has stated himself, that there was no one existing in his heart like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala existed in his heart. He said one time to the companions, at the same time trying to show them what Abu Bakr meant to him. He said, لو كنت متخذا أحدا خليلا لاتخذت أبا بكر خليلا ولكن قلبي امتلأ حبا لله. If I was to take anyone as the most beloved to my heart, I would have taken Abu Bakr as the most beloved to me. But my heart has been filled with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had no one else in his heart except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he used to pray before he travels, he used to say, Allahumma anta sahibu fi safar. And you are my companion during my journey. The Rasul saw no one else other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as his companion. If he was standing and praying in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there was nobody and nothing can distract him. Not at all. There was one incident, brothers and sisters, one incident that he was distracted. And let's see what he'd done with that time. He was gifted a, a clothing, a gown, 
from the people of Yemen. And it had a lot of colors on it. It was very colorful. And while he was in his prayer, his eyes caught those colors. Those colors distracted his attention. As soon as he stopped, he took it off, folded that beautiful, expensive gown that he was given, and sent it back to the person that gifted it to him. Even though we don't give back gifts, and we accept them, and the Rasul accepts gifts, but this gift distracted the most important thing in his life, prayers. Because prayers, as he said, is a communication between the servant and his Lord. And that was when the Rasul excuse me, was communicating with his Lord. And he sent it to the one that gave it to him and said, thank you, but it distracted me from my prayers. He had concerns, stress at his life at times, just like all of us do. And whenever things get heavy on him, he turns to his muaddin, he turns to Bilal, the one that calls prayers, and he will say, Arihna, Arihna biha ya Bilal. Ease our tensions with prayers, O Bilal. His tensions were calmed with prayers. His stress was relieved by standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It wasn't talking to his wife. Neither was it talking to his friends. It was a matter, brothers and sisters, in talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He understood that with the dhikr, your heart becomes settled. Allah bi dhikrillah tatma'innu al Brothers and sisters, when we love, our love has to be directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet before anyone else. In the hadith, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لَن يَجِدَ أَحَدُكُمْ طَعْمَ الْإِيمَانِ حَتَّى يَكُونَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِمَّا سُوَاهُمَا None of you will get a taste the sweetness of iman, the sweetness of faith, until Allah and His Messenger are more beloved to Him than Himself, than everything else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemned a group of people that they loved their worldly things as they loved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and complimented the believers for loving Allah more. He said, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ And those who are believers have more love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than their worldly things. And in fact, there's a verse in the Qur'an al-Kareem that identifies eight, eight desires and love and things that we love in life. And at the end of that verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If these eight are more beloved to you than I in the struggle of my path, in my prophet, then wait for my punishment. Listen to this ayah. Say, if your fathers, وَأَبْنَاءُكُمْ in your children. وَأَبْنَاءُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ in your brothers. وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ in your wives. وَأَمْوَالٌ اقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَا كَسَاءٌ وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ in, in, in your tribes, in your families. وَأَمْوَالٌ اقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَا كَسَادَةٌ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِهَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِهِ فَتَبَيَّنُوا And all the wealth that you comp- uh, uh, compile to yourself in your homes, in your nations, in your race, if it is more beloved to you than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet, in the struggle on his path, then wait for his punishment. Rasul Sallallahu showed us that love at its peak. And he was so close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala allowed him to go where no man has ever went before. He allowed him to go and be risen to the heavens and back in one night. At a given night, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was approached by Jibreel in Al-Buraq, the ride that he was riding on. And he was taken all the way to Jerusalem, prayed and led the prayer for all the prophets in the history. And then he was risen. Look at this love. He was risen to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. 
the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed him to be different from everyone else to be risen to the heavens. Allah Ta'ala describes that in Surah Al-Najm when he said, فَكَانَ قَابَ قَوْسَيْنِ أَوْ أَدْنَى فَكَانَ قَابَ قَوْسَيْنِ He was this close. Al-Qawz, it's like, it's like the, the moon when, 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 on the first day of its birth. Al-Qawz is like the bow. He was as close as a bow or closer. فَكَانَ قَابَ قَوْسَيْنِ أَوْ أَدْنَى فَأَوْحَى إِلَى عَبْدِهِ مَا أَوْحَى and he revealed to him what he did not reveal to anyone else before. Part of that love for this ummah because of the Rasul that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifted the restraints and the hardships that was on the people before and the nations before. Even the salah, my brothers and sisters out there, in the past, people used to pray 50 times a day. We pray five times. And it's multiplied by 10. So we get the reward of 50. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed that affection towards the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because of the strong affection that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that on the day of judgment, he is the only one given permission to intercede for humanity. When all the prophets fail, fall short, and they all say, I only care for myself today, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I will do it. I will do it. And he prays under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asks for the people forgiveness and for the judgment to start. And because of that love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for his prophet, he was given al-maqam al-mahmood, a the praised stand the praised position where no other human being will share. Al-Maqam Al-Mahmood where no other human being whatsoever will have and share. It was given for the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi because he is the only human being that none existed in his heart except Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He showed us how to love his fellow brothers and sisters and family but he truly put us at awe and how he loved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I come to the end of my episode, I pray that Allah opens our hearts in loving Him and have Him more important in our lives than ourselves and everything else because through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only way to go to heaven. I thank you for being with me today in this episode of prophetic traits, another trait of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hopefully a trait that you and I will establish for ourselves. I hope to see you again. In the next episode, I'm your host, Abdul Hakim Ali. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mm -hmm.